Hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle with a note on the accuracy of the Casio F91W watches. And this is a little bit off the normal topic that we do. In other words, this is not particularly about navigation or celestial navigation, but it's just about these watches. There are uh, many more people in the world that care about these watches, these particular watches, than care about celestial. And so this is a quick note for them, unrelated to navigation and without uh, too much of the details, but enough detail to have real numbers. In other words, these, this is probably the most famous, perhaps the most famous watch in the world for multiple reasons. It's almost 30 years old now and hasn't changed a bit and it still costs ten dollars, ten point zero dollars, maybe eleven if you, ten or eleven, but I got these, I paid ten dollars for these and these are six, I've got six of them here that I'm going to show you how that we measured the accuracy of these watches and um, so with some real numbers. So okay, so here's the way here's the way we did it. They're basically set up like this uh, on a table, and then the standard that I'm using here is this uh, iWatch here, which is connected to the network, and that has then li uh, accurate uh, accurate UTC. These are these are actually set to UTC GMT. This one is actually set to Seattle time, but that doesn't matter. These watches are all set to Seattle time. I mean to uh, UTC. And then uh, I'm going to put, I'll put a note in the description about movies and articles we have on ways to determine accurate uh, GMT. But that's not the issue now. So what we do is we set these up. These watches were all set on July the 7th. July the 7th. Uh, well, the, these, let's see. Anyway, I, I'll show you that in a moment. The top ones were set on July 7th. These might have been a second batch bought later. And then, but the procedure for doing that is what's important. So um, basically, we set this up like this, and then take uh, 10, 10 or 12, uh, we use 10, but we take 10 cell phone pictures of these watches, uh, once a second, uh, or just pretty much as quick as you can through here. And then, uh, let's see, let me close that down. Okay, and then, whoops, whoa there then this is just a scratch paper where we write down what we observed in other words let me go back here so if so this is say picture one picture one of ten so this says a 55 this is number a 5549 so this is the right time so you see what we would write down at this moment here is that this watch has a correction of plus two seconds so this would be plus two this is 47 that would be plus four this would be uh, minus two this guy would be minus four and so on so that's what you write down on this page here so that's the first picture all ten pictures and you have to, if you want to get it accurate to the tenth on these measurements, that, that's what's required. It, I tried to get around that. And you can also find out how accurate the watches are if you're willing to wait, you know, a couple months. But if you want to do it in two weeks or four weeks, then you really have to take into account the tenths. Now, then you average these numbers here. So you see this column here, you would just say there's ten of these. So I just add this up. That's ten times two is twenty. 21, 22 divided by 10, that's plus 2.2. This is uh, 40, 40, uh, 39, 38, 37, 36. So that's plus 3.6. So you see, it's very easy to figure out what these averages are. And then that, those are, so that's then what we would call the error in the watch on this particular date. Then we go to, oh, here's another, I just made a note on that. Um, if you want to get accurate uh, time on the phone, you can call that number. Okay, now I go to a spreadsheet here to show the results and then we're done. Let me see. Okay, so then these all go into a spreadsheet like this. So we put in the time and the date and we figure then uh, the difference, uh, how much each watch lost every day. Again, these details uh, uh, these details aren't important now, but we're just 
finding out the rate, how the rate changes, no, excuse me, how the error changes. And then here you go and you get some, some results. And so I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you then. So what, what I've got now is here's some real numbers for six Casio watches. So if you want to know how good is the watch, and the fact is they're very good. So here is a Casio, here's the number B, and this is, a, this is a time per day. So here's the Casio, here's a sample. This one gains 1.5 seconds every 10 days. So there's, there's a, that's how we present our data, 1.5 seconds every 10 days. So if you know what day it was set, then you can always figure out the correct time. Here's a, oh, let's see here, how does this work? Oh, okay. Here's another one. So that's 1.5 seconds. This is 1.6 seconds. This one is, oh, actually, this one's losing 1.6 seconds every 10 days. That's gaining 1.5 for 10 days. That's losing 1.6 for 10 days. That's a Timex. We don't, oh, by the way, look at this Timex. It's about twice as bad. But anyway, we don't care about that now. But here's another Casio, 1.2 seconds. It's gaining 1.2 seconds per 10 days. Now that three, those, those three were in the first batch. This is the second batch that we bought. And now this one, look at this. This is gaining, this Casio is gaining, now we don't have as much data, 25 days. But this one is gaining 0 0.2 seconds every 10 days. 0.2 seconds every 10 days. This one is 0.9 0.9 seconds every 10 days, and this one is losing 0.9 seconds every 10 days. So that's the results. It's like um, somewhere between minus one second and plus 1.5 seconds every 10 days. And that is, uh, so that makes them extremely good watches for, for a random quartz watch. You could spend $1,000 on a quartz watch and have it not be as good as these. So that's where I will end this presentation. We have other related notes about why we care about such things and so on, but that's not the issue at hand.